Kia ora team, this is video two in the ecology series and this video is all about food chains and food webs. So in this video you're learning about food chains and food webs. By the end of this lesson you should be able to describe how energy is transferred along a food chain and across trophic levels, identify all the food chains in a food web diagram, and you should be able to discuss what happens when a food web is disrupted. So a food chain is a linear diagram that shows what eats what in a particular habitat. Here's an example of a simple food chain. Grass is eaten by cow and cow is eaten by human in some cultures. The black arrows in a food chain diagram represent the transfer of energy from one organism to another. The arrows are always pointed from the organism that's being eaten to the organism that's doing the eating because that's the direction of energy transfer. We need to learn about trophic levels before we can understand food chains because the trophic level of an organism describes where on the food chain that organism is. In other words, it tells you how high up on the food chain that organism is. Let's look at this food chain right here. Rabbit eats grass, fox eats rabbit, and wolf eats fox. At the bottom of the food chain is always the producer. One level higher than the producer is the primary consumer, and this eats the producer. One level above the primary consumer is the secondary consumer, and this eats the primary consumer. And one level above the secondary consumer is the tertiary consumer, and this eats the secondary consumer. The tertiary consumer is at the top of this food chain. Let's look at this food chain right here. Grasshopper eats grass, robin, which is a bird, eats grasshopper, and hawk, which is a larger predatory bird, eats robin. In this food chain, grass is the primary producer and it's at the bottom of the food chain. One next level up is the grasshopper and that's the primary consumer because the primary consumer eats the primary producer. One level up from the primary consumer is the secondary consumer, which is the robin, and the secondary consumer eats the primary consumer. And one level up from the secondary consumer is the tertiary consumer, which is the hawk in this case. And at the top of this food chain is the tertiary consumer, which is the hawk. When all of the food chains in an ecosystem are all joined up together, they form a food web. So a food web is a diagram that combines many food chains. Here are some chains in this food web. Rosebush is eaten by the snail. The snail is eaten by the thrush, which is a bird. The thrush is eaten by a cat. In another food chain, rosebush is eaten by the aphid. Aphid is eaten by the ladybird. The ladybird is eaten by the fantail. And the fantail is eaten by the cat. And a third food chain, the rosebush is eaten by a caterpillar, the caterpillar is eaten by a spider, the spider is eaten by a fantail, and the fantail is eaten by the cat. Here's the same food web again, but this time, what would happen if the population or the total number of one of the organisms changed? Like, what would happen if the rosebush died? What would be the immediate effects, and what would be the follow-on effects? Well, this rosebush is the primary producer. If it died, the immediate effect would be that the consumers that feed on it, the snail, the aphid, and the caterpillar, would have no food. They would starve and they would die. The follow-on effect after this would be that all the other animals, the secondary consumers and the, ter the tertiary consumers in the food web would die too because the animals they feed on these guys, the snail, aphids, and caterpillars, are now dead. So if the producer dies, all the consumer dies, and the ecosystem collapses. Let's look at another scenario. 
What would happen if all the caterpillars died? Just the caterpillars. The rose bush is fine this time. What would be the immediate effects? And what would the follow-on effects be? Well, caterpillars, snails, and aphids all eat the rose bush. If there were fewer caterpillars, well, if there were no caterpillars, the immediate effect would be that there would be more rose bush for the snail and aphid, snail and aphids to eat. The follow-on effect would be that with more food, the populations of snails and aphids would increase. So what's another follow-on effect? Well, what eats caterpillars? Spiders. Now that the spiders have lost one food source, they have to eat more prey mantis to maintain their population size. So the number of prey mantis would decrease. If there's less prey mantis to eat ladybirds, there will be more ladybirds to eat aphids, and so on and so forth. And so you've made it to the end of this video lesson. So by now, you should be able to describe how energy is transferred along a food chain across trophic levels and identify all the food chains in a food web diagram. And finally, you should be able to discuss what happens when a food web is disrupted. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.